In this video, I talk with my friend Donna Rodriguez, and we do a form of partner meditation, connection practice that took me at least into some deep places, both on this call and in the past when I've connected with Donna. Um, in the beginning of the conversation, we talk a little bit about uh, Donna's background and what this form of partner meditation is all about. And then for the majority of the recording, we're actually doing the partner meditation and describing our experiences. And then towards the end, we talk about how you could give this form of partner meditation and connection practice a try. It's a little bit of an experimental video. Don and I weren't sure how it would be received or what people would think about it or uh, what it would be like to watch it, but we really enjoyed connecting and thought it would be useful and interesting for people to see and know about as well. So we'd love to hear what you think if you do watch it and hear any feedback that you have, what you liked, what you didn't, any questions that you may have, and hope you enjoy it and benefit from it. Hi, Donna. Hi, Tashin. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm so happy to be with you. Mm, me too. Mm -hmm. So for everyone watching, uh, Donna is a dear friend of mine that I met through the Monastic Academy. And uh, during our times that we've been to there together in person, we um, started connecting in a uh, really different way for me, at least. I've done a lot of circling practice and other kinds of you know, authentic relating and connection forms. But the connection that I had with Donna was really special for me and um, really enjoyed doing that kind of connection. And it's uh, part of Donna's, uh, I might say, vocation or calling or work to be doing this kinds of connection. And I saw a lot of the people in the community at the Mask Academy really cherishing their relationship with you as well. So wanted to have you on today to talk about that and, and share this form of connection with with others. Um, but before we get into that, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your background with uh, your life and your work and your spiritual practice? And yeah, I would love to hear more about you. Um, <clears throat> well, as long as I can remember, um, as long as I can remember, like the strongest drive in me has been to find God. Um, even when I was like nine and 10 years old, I just wanted to sit in the church by myself when nobody was there. And I wanted to sit in the quiet and um, just be in the presence of God. Like something uh, was just drawing me even from a young age. And so by the time I was in my mid twenties, I was already in Christian ministry and um, my whole life was, a, you know, I, I kind of lived like a monk in my 20s, where um, I worked during the day at the church school. And then I worked at night with the church services. And I lived right across the street from the church. And um, my it really was my whole life. And um, toward the end, like the end of my 20s, I started to feel like, well, is this all there is of the spiritual life? And I came across um, I came across a book written by Jean Edwards um, called *The Divine Romance*. And at the end of this book, um, he talked about these different communities that he planted across the country and in other it spread to other countries. And there were basically Christians that met outside the organized church. And I I had to go and see what they were doing. So. I went to visit, and when I went there, I realized that they had something of God that I didn't know, and so I left my job, and I left my house that I just had built, and my family, and I just left everybody, and I was like, I have to do this, and I think this was a turning point in um, my, my search for God was no longer a solo activity. Um, this is where I learned how to do what I now call partner meditation. Um, back then it was more like prayer. Um, but what, it, what we did, um, uh, Jean, Jean Edwards, you know, the, the planter, 
he would give these retreats and he would take us really slow and, and he would say, okay, just be in the presence of God with another person. So I would sit side by side with another person. We wouldn't, we weren't facing each other. We were just looking out into nature and the instructions were just, just love your Lord, you know, just, just say Lord, or I love you, you know, nothing special and just ignore your partner. So just get like acclimated to being in the presence of God and being in that intimacy that you have with God in the presence of another person. So that's what we did. And then like day two or three, he said, now turn toward each other and look at each other in the eyes and keep speaking to God like you were, you know, Lord, I love you. And then, you know, through the course of like two weeks, we would add in um, like praying the scriptures and uh, things like more of a dialogue be between each other, you know, emerged from that. Um, but that was very significant in my life in that um, we took what we, what we gained, that intimacy that we gained with each other of speaking to God while looking at another person. We took that back into the community and we lived that way. And after doing that for as many years as I did, I don't like seven or eight years, um, it became natural to, even when I meet somebody, I'm, I know, I'm looking for God in you because I know I'm going to find you. I'm going to find God there. And, you know, he, he said, it's as simple as there's a place in you where there's, there's a place in you that is God. And there's a place in me that is God. And when we're looking at each other in the presence of God, we're actually meeting there where we're already one. And there doesn't have to be a separation of selves. And so I lived this way and I really didn't understand how much this had become a part of my life until I left that community and I went to live out in, you know, the normal um, American society where the development of the individual is paramount and, you know, we live our individual lives and um, I crashed, you know, I got, I felt really isolated. I didn't know how to relate to people in this deeper way. Um, I didn't want surface, surface relationships. And so it wasn't until, you know, like 10 years of basically being lonely um, that I started to uh, learn different um, modalities like circling and mutual awakening and authentic relating, some of the things that you named. And all of a sudden it was there again, only it wasn't, it wasn't like, I'm looking for God in you and I'm meeting with you in God. It was, let's just be together person to person. Um, you know, we're more than our bodies. We're more than our minds. We're more than our feelings and emotions. And there's this other part of us that's a mystery. You know, like we're a mystery even to ourselves. And let's include that or let's focus on that when we're being together and just, you know, maybe be in silence for a while and then maybe see what words emerge from that space. And I discovered that even though we weren't looking for God, what people report often when they do circling or these types of things is that there is a sacred element that emerges and, you know, how, whatever your spirituality is, you know, you might call it God, um, you might call it you know, we're in this vast emptiness together and we're not even us anymore. We're just um, together, like with everything. Um, so does that, that kind of brings me to the present. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, I love, I love hearing that and um, uh, such an interesting journey and a really, uh, it makes sense of a lot of the things that, you know, I've experienced with you and helps put in some puzzle pieces. And, uh, you know, you've, you've talked about some of these things before, but it's nice to hear it all laid out. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. So you said you call it partner meditation now. Um, when you 
start doing this partner meditation with someone what do you what do you tell them how do you how do you talk about it how does how does someone get started what what's the, what's it uh what's it like to get started what are the instructions as it were yeah <clears throat> so i would first say just to slow down yeah. and relax um, i like to encourage people to focus on their breathing because breathing is an exchange um and we're at, we're looking we're ultimately looking for the exchange between you and me, but in the beginning, um, it's nice to notice what's going on in your physical body. Um, for some people, it's kind of uncomfortable keeping eye contact with another person. Um, That's people, an important part of the instructions. Just when you and I started the at the thing, I remember you saying was like, "We're going to make eye, unbroken eye contact now," <laughs> <laughs> and that was. Uh, you know, most of the circling that I'd done in authentic relating, it was not involving that much eye contact. And I think that was a really big uh, difference for me, at least. So uh, sorry to interrupt, but it just that's a that was basically the instruction that you gave me. It was like, we're going to we're going to make eye contact now. <laughs> so, like, oh. Right. So the first thing is just becoming um, like just getting used to what happens in you, like that reactivity mm -hmm. that happens in us and it, and like acknowledging it. So I'm nervous making eye contact with you. I'm wondering what you're thinking about me. I'm wondering if I can do this. I wonder if I'm good enough. I wonder if I'll do this right. All of that stuff is self-concern that will actually, like it's actually not the focus of partnered meditation. It's, it's part of it and um, part of being able to drop the self-concern and be truly with either the experience of another person or be in the shared experience and what's happening there is just first acknowledging, whoa, I'm reacting to this. This is different. This feels, you know, whatever it is that it arises in you. So there's that. And we might spend some time there just naming what your experience is. And then I might ask you to, okay, and what else is there? So you're more than your body. Um, if you can maybe just focus on the space outside of your body and expand into that. And what do you experience there? And then maybe actually focusing on the eye contact and really looking into, hmm, can I be here and can I be relaxed? Can I be with my own experience? And can I look beyond my own experience into what else is here between us? Can you say uh, why the eyes are so important in this form of connection? What is it about eye contact that uh, makes this form of connection so powerful? Yeah, I have found that when we when we look up, like when we're talking or, you know, look, when we look away from our partner, we tend to go into our own subjective experience again. So we're in our own thoughts and we're in, we're consumed with what's going on in us and keeping the eye contact keeps you focused and grounded in the we rather than just the me. There's also the aspect of You know, I think it was Shakespeare who said the windows are the eyes, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So you're actually looking beyond um, what I what I see as this this surface Toshin, right? There's so much more to you than meets the eye. And so much is communicated through the eyes. And so through the eyes, I feel like I can um see beyond you to that part of you that is sacred, um, that is connected to God. Um, often I will feel like I'm looking at myself. Um, the boundaries, you know, sort of blur between you and me. And I find that it's kind of hard to do that without keeping the eye contact. Yeah, I'm imagining that someone watching this might not have experience with some of these 
kinds of things and states and forms of connection and um, you know the description you just gave was sort of evocative and, and helpful but like can you say a bit more about uh, how someone might notice a shift from me to we and what what that's like qualitatively in your experience <sighs> well there's a course going on right now um, uh, where we're we're teaching you know how to do this for mm -hmm. first timers and uh, one of the participants came out of the practice and she said, I don't know what to think. I don't know who I am. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know who I am. I don't know who you are, but I feel like a moth to a flame. Like I can't look away from this. There's something here that's drawing me and I don't really know what it is. And really everybody's experience is different. Um, Partner meditation may be for a long time. Like it may take you two, three months before you can even get comfortable with your own experience and your own reactivity mm -hmm. to actually see beyond that. And when it happens, um, it just happens. Like it's not something I can, you know, I can, I can like, I can direct you and like suggest where to look and how to look. But ultimately, you have to just step into it. Um, there's a willingness that it takes to actually open yourself to another person. Um, if you think of maybe how you are with God, um, you know, I was taught when I was young that God knows everything about me without me telling him. Mm. And he sees everything and knows everything and loves me just the way I am. And if you can be in that transparency with another person like you are with God, um, that's like an opening to a shared connection, a shared awareness, where you just start to notice things that you don't normally notice when you're, um, when you're busy like defending yourself and protecting yourself and wondering, am I okay? Am I good enough? Am I bad? <laughs> you know, all the things that are normally in the surface mind. Um, I don't know. Does that help? Yeah, it does. I, I really resonate with the uh, the report that the person in the course mentioned of like, I don't know what this is, but I'm really drawn to it because I think that's part of why I wanted to have this podcast as well, because, you know, and we talked about this a fair bit in person, but um, my own experience of being with you was a lot like that person's where it's like, wow, this is fascinating and it's incredible and amazing. And also I have no idea what's happening right now. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, there's something here that I've not quite experienced before. And um, yeah, just it, mm, I'm the kind of person at least who wants to make sense of what's happening and uh, try to connect the, the felt experience to some kind of sense making or, or mental understanding. and. Uh, that can be an obstacle sometimes, but uh, to the extent that it can be spoken about, it's, uh, I don't know, this is how I approach really my meditation instruction when I work with people is um, I go into a lot of detail about the things that you can talk about, and then that hopefully that pushes them in the direction of the things that are harder to talk about, because uh, there's a lot in meditation that is difficult to talk about, but there are things that are very much feasible to talk about, you know, like classic example would be the five hindrances, for example, it's a list, you can name it. Those are known problems that come up when you meditate that have known solutions. It's good to know the list and know how to work with, what do I do if I'm sleepy, for example? And then if you have that, then that's a step towards some of these other states that are harder to talk about and harder to access. And um, yeah. so to the extent that we really can talk about what this connection is and what's happening there, I think that's really useful. And you know, we can acknowledge that it might be difficult to talk about or difficult to understand, but to the extent that we can speak about it, I think it helps people, at least like me, that want to understand what's happening and, and give it a try, yeah. Yeah, it helps if you can put aside your need to understand and make sense of it, mm -hmm. even, you know, even for just a couple minutes mm -hmm. and just stay with the experience and name what your experience is. Um, 
Do you want to try that right now? Sure. Yeah. 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 So when I when I just let go of making sense and and needing to make sense because we're you know lis being listened to by other people, <laughs> um, you know what's present is just the welcome of your smile. Um, there's something in that that actually draws me out of myself, um, draws me toward you. Like there's a, like something in me that wants to lean forward and actually meet you in a closer way. Mm. And what's present for you? Um. Yeah, I feel happy and it's a little hard to think and I'm sort of um, trying to put my awareness on you and maintain eye contact and it's sort of uh, getting proprioceptive images of uh, flipping my <laughs> awareness into your body. Yeah. So we've done this a few times and I'm noticing how it's real easy when you say that to actually join in that experience with you of the flipping, You're sort of a mirroring. And I don't know if I'm the mirror or if I'm the person looking into the mirror. Yeah. 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 And I love how that brings a smile. Like there's a joy that's just arising just in naming this simple awareness between us. I appreciate, really appreciate your openness. Hearing you say that uh, softens my heart and sort of moves me and uh, makes me feel like crying, yeah. Yeah, I'm experiencing um, the blending of the voices where when you said, like, I feel like crying, I almost was like, well, that would be okay if that happened in me too. So there's like a blending of the experience into one experience where we don't really have to be separate selves. And there's no fear of losing myself here, even though those words might sound scary. Um, there's a there's a trust that I have with you, and it would be okay if we shared the same experience completely. Yeah, the flipping, yeah, I get these images and uh, there's a sense of before it was like just flipping into you, but now it's like holding both and uh, like I'm two people looking at each other. There's a sense also of looking from the center of what you just named. Mm. Whoa. Um. <laughs> And like, like I've actually moved into a center space that is like my ground of being is more, um, more in the center than in me. Yeah. What's it like for you when you go there into the center? <laughs> well, you asked. So it's like, <laughs> it's like being the stem of a flower and the stem, like what rises up from the stem is like the leaves and then the petals and the seed and the fragrance that rises. It's like being this, like the nucleus or the beginning or the origin of something. 
and and looking at us as what comes out of that origin center that makes sense mm -hmm. so you are a part of me that extends there's like a living part of us that's extending um, and I'm like sort of following that following where we're extending almost if I could like follow the fragrance of us there's a movement a motion that I keep sort of recalibrating to that's us hmm. as you said all that I, I got like <laughs> Um, sort of a dizzy feeling and that but it wasn't unpleasant and uh, senses of like I was trying to put myself in the center and then like yeah both of us and then uh, it's very visual for me and and then like this dimension came in as well of like it felt like I was being drawn up and looking at us from below or like or from above and then also from below and I, yeah yeah, there's a sense of not being located in any one place. Like I can, we can have that 360 view mm -hmm. and go into any one of the parts, if mm -hmm. there's parts of us. Mm -hmm. But it's like being many places at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we've expanded to... And then the words don't make sense anymore. It's like, well, did we distill down or did we expand into? Or are we the center or the circumference? And um, and and then being brought in this moment back to just the intimacy of the moment. And I just want to name for the people listening that that can be that can be uncomfortable. Um, and you're not used to it, but I'm so very used to this level of intimacy and there's a sort of transparency that I'm willing to bring. Um, it's really nice. What is it that you told me? You told me a certain phrase several times of like, um, like I'm willing to let you in or something like that. I forget exactly how you put mm. it. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, like we're we're so used to keeping our boundaries up with people that sometimes it helps to know that you're invited in. You're mm. invited here. Um, you're invited to share my experience completely. And um, we say, there's room in me for you. Meditation, like solo meditation, helps to develop that inner space. Mm -hmm. And then we have it to offer and say, there's room in me for you. Yeah, I can really uh, attune to me or I can attune to you. And yeah, then there's also this other whole dimension of feeling like I'm attuning to we. Uh, or like something that's like both of us are bigger than us. And, uh, it's like delightful and disorienting at the same time for me. It's also very precious. Like I, mm. I have the, the feeling like that I'm handling something very precious and sacred. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just special. Um, knowing that you're this close to another person, um, it makes me really aware of that what I do matters. Yeah, I'm remembering um, there was a time that Donna and I connected and we were in the main hall at the Monastic Academy and there were lots of other people around and uh, lots of noises happening and somehow it seemed to me like I don't know what your experience of it was but like that we were both drawn into really heightened auditory awareness and then someone was like vacuuming and like <laughs> dropping things and it was just a normal day but the uh, uh there was a significance there of all of these noises and i experienced that really differently and yeah that like a heightened awareness that what i do matters even the 
the smallest things or the smallest motions or the smallest noises. Um, and it's really safe here right now being with you because it's just us on a Zoom call and uh, very quiet, stable environment, which is so nice. Uh, <laughs> just in, in, in bringing up that memory, of, it was kind of jarring for me at least at the time. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah. The, um, the senses can be heightened like um, that, that like the sound of the sound of everything was like vivified, and when that vacuum, the vacuum came in the room, um, it was like we we became the noise of the vacuum too. Um, yeah, it really illuminates how everything is interconnected. The sounds, the movements, all the people, it um, illuminates that interconnected is interconnectedness and interdependence of life. It is jarring sometimes. I'm getting a lot of uh, visuals of your face where you're glowing and then the shape of your face is sort of morphing into different kind of presentations and uh, yeah, it's like you look divine to me. There's a sense of like you're hearing your voice is hearing more than your voice. Um, <laughs> Shenzhen talks about having a complete experience. When you experience something so completely that the whole universe is there with you. Hmm. So in hearing your voice, it's like, it's more than you. It's like everything speaking in this moment. Mm. There's room for everything here and empty and free enough for there to be nothing and it'd be okay. There's not really a need for words. I feel like I'm with something very much larger than the Tashin that I see with my eyes. Something that I'm remembering that you told me about a few times and Again, I can't remember exactly how you put it, but it's uh, like that when you make this kind of connection with someone, it has a different flavor with different people. Is that, am yeah. I misremembering that? Well, every one of us is unique. And um, no matter how many times you do this practice, it's different with every person because they're bringing the mystery that they are to the blend. Mm. so to speak um, so there's a certain flavor of Toshin and then there's also the unexpectedness of I don't know what's going to happen next um, but yeah if this is very different a very different flavor than all of the other practices that I've done with you know lots of people because there's no other you Yeah, it's reminding me that, like, uh, one of the things I really appreciated in the past and right now is uh, 
that through the, my meditation practice and other spiritual practices, there have been sort of uh, shifts that have happened or skills that I've gained that affect social encounters differently. Um, but that really felt like a solo practice that I was doing on my own. And then like here now and in the past when we've connected, I've had the sense like that I can bring those to the table and be met. And like, it's like we're like playing together with those skills and uh, moving and dancing together. And uh, it's a relief because most of the time it's like, there's not an awareness that that's possible with a lot of ordinary daily life connections. It's just, uh, you know, like message packets through words from one person <laughs> to another, you know? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, there's no distance to send the message packet to right here. Like we're, we're just like, we're, we're our own center. And it's just a speaking of what is happening in our shared center. Mm. Yeah, there's no place for the information or the words to travel. Mm. Um, something else that came up when you were talking is that I generally have a lot of social anxiety and um, this practice has helped me to know that um, even though I have the tendency to long for um, conversations and interactions that are below be beneath the surface, you know, that are more deep, um, when there, when there's mutuality, when you have a willing partner like we have right here, uh, what can happen is truly uh, it's heart opening. Um, there's this sense that I'm not isolated in the world anymore, um, that I can truly be with another person and, and experience intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, but after doing this for a long time, there's also like it's eased that social anxiety in that I, I can be with my own experience and know that like just knowing that if there was willingness, we could do this or that I could see the divine in, in every person, it's just right there. And that, that sort of flattens out the anxiety for me. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm. I'm feeling a lot of appreciation that it's possible to do this on Zoom. I think uh, you and I have had a couple of Zoom calls, but uh, my recollection is that I had sort of like blocks up to this kind of connection at those times because like different things that I was feeling or situations I was in. And so I haven't really let myself feel this mm. through Zoom. And uh, it's a delight and a surprise <laughs> and a wonder that it is it is very possible here at least as far as i can tell yeah it's actually amazing like the computer screen drops away and it's just you and me mm -hmm. yeah it, the experience is like sitting in the sunlight of, of tasha <laughs> <laughs> yeah like like there's nothing else going on in the moment anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is the world. And you are the sunshine that I'm sitting in. You talked before about being in the center. Does that mean that you're kind of with me now or where where are you? Where do you experience yourself? I'm in the center of the sun of you. Mm. <laughs> Does that need more explanation? No, no. <laughs> I just ask because I noticed that like I'm it's a little bit hard for me to stabilize. Uh, I've had the sense before in the past of like being able to stabilize in a we and sometimes it's hard to uh, stay there. And 
So for me today, it's like very much like boom, 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 boom. You know, it's, it's moving a little bit and yeah. that feels totally fine. Uh, but I was just, it had me curious where, where you were. Yeah, I was actually experiencing that in the beginning when I was talking about the motion mm -hmm. and having to follow where where the lead is. Mm -hmm. um, but but then it sort of settled down into this, oh, I'm just sitting in your sunlight. Mm. It's also important to say that um, you don't have to make sense when you're doing these kind of practices. Um, especially if you're just trying to follow the experience where it's going, you know, like moment by moment with you. Um, there's like a focusing now, like I can feel your attention. I can feel your focus on this pinpoint. And we're like, we're really, we're really, um, like distilled down to this point. Mm -hmm. And the point is us. But all this other sunlight around us, like being the nucleus of a cell. And the cell is us, but we're just focused right in this point, mm -hmm. really close together. And close together is not the right language because we're just, we're together as one. Mm -hmm. And there's a joy in knowing that you're staying there with me, like you're willing to meet me there and stay this close and, and um, not be afraid. Um, you can really feel the trust between us. And there's a lot of love. And with that, I also want to say that this practice doesn't have to feel loving and feel uh, calm and like beautiful sunlight. Sometimes, you know, if, if you're staying exactly what's with what's there, um, like earlier you said, you know, I feel like crying. Or sometimes you could feel like, oh, I felt like you just popped out. Where did you go? I lost you, you know? Like, um, part of the practice is being able to stay with whatever's there and not having to um, having having a prescribed experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Getting this lovely sense that I'm just hearing you talk like and remembering it from the past as well of a sense that you or I at different times are speaking for us that our minds and vocal organs are like for an us rather than a me. Uh, so it's like as if I could have said the exact things that, yeah. that you said. Uh, and uh, it's a delight and um, unsettling, but in a not uncomfortable way, it just, uh, unfamiliar experience, uh, surprising. It's like, oh, she's, she, who's saying that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's a blending of the different times too. It's like the, it, like the practices that we've done in the past are with us. Mm. Um, like there's a flattening of time, like, there's not really a past, there's just a now, mm -hmm. a sort of timeless quality to this. Mm -hmm. In the sense that I know you for very long, like longer than I do. Yeah. There's a sense of knowing you in the future. And there's a sense of knowing you outside of time. And we just got really big, stretched out. 
like, like we're stretched across each other in time. Maybe stretched across lifetimes. The jitteriness in my body has completely relaxed. Mm. I feel completely regulated by you meeting me here in this experience. There's also a concern for our listeners. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll be curious to hear what people say. Uh, yeah, that might be a good place to close our experimental connection in this way for now, at least. Uh, is there any, uh, is there any like reflections that you would have on that experience or uh, thoughts about it, what happened there that you want to share? Mm. Well, it's actually, it's actually um, hard to break the connection. <laughs> um, there's like a depth that we've opened up with each other that um, I'm going to let it I'm just going to let it do what it wants to do. If it if it goes away, it goes away. If it stays, it stays. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like when you you want to take your experience from the cushion off the cushion. You know, there's like no need to uh, solidify into a solid self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think in reflection upon doing these practices, um, that that's actually an effect that it's had on me, where I don't feel the need to boundary up, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, when I'm, you know, just doing my normal life and engaging with other people, even in the grocery store. You know, I, we have masks on. Um, I can barely see people. <laughs> But there's still a sense of, I don't need to boundary up. I, my sense of self can remain blurry and um, be respectful of other people's boundaries at the same time. Yeah, and there's, there's like a lot of power in that um, and a lot of energy that comes from not having to keep my boundaries up and knowing that I won't lose myself. No. I imagine someone watching this might want to give these kinds of connections a try. Uh, what advice or suggestions would you give that person? Well, you need a willing partner <laughs> first. So I have two places that I can suggest where you can go to find a willing partner um, for a very, a very beginning, uh, like a basic um, experience. There's actually an app that I've helped develop with some other people. It's called the We-Partner Meditation app for those of you who are on iPhones. Um, it's in the App Store and you can download it and find a willing partner that will do a nine minute partner meditation with you. So you start out just making eye contact in silence. And then you have a few minutes to just talk back and forth. It's a video, um, but you can talk back and forth. Um, just, you know, noticing what's arising in you. And if you can even sense the, the exchange between you and putting words to that, you can do it as many times as you want, and it's free. Um, and if you feel like you've done enough of these practices or maybe experienced something like this when you're circling or doing other uh, partner meditations, there's a virtual community called the We Wanting. And every 
second Tuesday, uh, second Sunday of the month, there's an open session where you can actually come on a Zoom and do a longer 20 or 30 minute practice with a person. Um, so yeah, there are there would be two ways. And if you're really brave, just <laughs> find a willing partner <laughs> and say, hey, let's try something. Um, knowing that it's always an experiment and you can't do it wrong. And um, But if you want some help and guidance, there might be you know, some ways to help you go deeper. Thank you for sharing those, Donna. And thank you again for coming on today. It's really lovely to talk to you and uh, I'm just glowing from this connection as I always am after we do this. And I'm really grateful for the people watching as well that they can uh, get a sense of this and really enjoyed, enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. It is always my delight to be with you. Thank you, Donna.